right. I mean, African music is, I mean, you know, Afrobeat and, 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 and magic is taking over a lot of the musical entertainment industry. Everybody got to have an Afrobeat artist in the collab, you know? And like 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 that 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 joint uh, what's the name he did um, Drake Drake and the, and the break in the joint is what's the name yeah. it's Wizkid you know and then you got uh, your homeboy uh, what's his name Fresh Montana yeah and the, and the other boy what's his name Rick Ross you got P Square when that joint where he's sitting on the yacht mm. you're talking about the most you saw that one right oh man you got did you see that the twins. No, P Square. You know, um, I check. I catch up with P Square and Rick Ross. But what about the potential of of African music? Um, <coughs> well, first of all, you got to redefine this shit because you know you remember how back in the day, um, Miles Davis and all of them had to fight to show. Or, or struggle to, to prove or, or argue that uh, you know you know Richard Wright and everybody used to argue how jazz is the only indigenous American music that came out the American experience was jazz and it's true and when you look at all of the music that that's popular around the world today it's all African music whether it came out of the U S or whether it came out of Africa just check it out black folks are not out here people aren't out here bumping you know to this bullshit. They're not bumping to no symphonies and, and, and Eurocentric. I mean, some people are there Eurocentric beat shit, but it's black music. What is rap? What is hip hop? It's the melding of the verbal or oral tradition and the beat. Where the beat come from? Africa. What, what songs are they flipping? James Brown, you understand? The Parliaments, Funkadelics. Where the bass lines come from? This is black music. When people look at the way you or I dress and we dress a certain way and we wear hoodies and we got a certain swag, they say, well, you're American. But what, what are they really saying? They're saying that this person comes from America because this is how they dress. But we the stylists. We the ones that's wearing this shit. We the ones that made the hoodie what it is. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is when you ask an African, when you tell an African that, you know, you are emulating Africa, African um, um, adaptations to another environment coming out of Africa, coming out of America, you're imitating yourself. They'll tell you that's not African. Just like, she'll tell me that I'm not African. So I don't understand what she's talking about. <laughs> this is this is what's happening. This is what happens when you don't have a movement. There's no movement here. You see? So there's no way to have this reverberate in a generation where that consciousness is raised little by little, point by point. I mean, you still got white Jesus is on the 12 truck. So you know they ain't no way. But the music is a way of getting the movement. Yes, it is. But look at the music. Look at how I got to where it is. Look at look at Nigeria. Look at Afrobeat. The major architects of Afrobeat were the people that came before that. The ones that were dealing with the hip hip hop. I'm not hip hop. Was dealing with high life, but mainly Fela Kuti. Fela Kuti is the one that put that shit, that Nigerian beat, in, um, on the map. It's Fela Kuti, and he had politics. They locked this motherfucker up, you know, dozens of times based on songs that he made. That's why Will Smith and Jay-Z got a play about it. Yeah, because he... Fela. Fela. Yeah, Fela. Fela Kuti. See, and it was crazy. And then, and then you know, the girls loved him. He said, Nick, 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 Nick. So they loved him. Nigga had 99 kids. The niggas would come out and, 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 and make a song after coming out the shower. We was tolerable. <laughs> Homeboy was a mad genius. And, 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 he, and he wrote shit that was straight to the point about the rulers of Nigeria, about African rulers, about these motherfuckers. That's why they were locking him up. He was talking all that out. I mean, he listen to his lyrics. You understand? And, and, and so, but the music that they took, these kids that came up after him, the beats and the shit that they took, and they created this Nigerian sound. You see what I'm saying? Has no politics. It's all about big cars. And you remember when the first, look at the early videos, the 1917, I mean, 2017, 2015, 2016 videos coming out of Nigeria. All the lead women are light skin. All of them. There's no dark skinned women at all in the lead videos. They just started that like last year. 
all of the women were black and they were literally they were they were they was literally African women who looked white. And they were always the love interests on the video. The one sitting in the car, the one he's pleading to for love, always light skinned women. Now some of them have got sick of that and did the reef clean first, but you see some chocolate honeys on there now. But that wasn't always like that. And remember, you made a point about how you listen to hip hop in the US, you listen to black pop music, and it's always talking about killing somebody, it's always talking about some type of stressed out, violent, semi violent, or some betrayal. It's always talking about something negative like that. But the music here was talking more, was more about fun, it was more about, you know, hanging out here in love, and you know, yeah, you had a broken heart, you cheated on you, yeah, but it was, it was more upbeat. And that was, that's a good point. You know, that, that's, a, that's an excellent point. But where are they trying to go with this? Look at the, uh, the, the artists that's coming up now. The ones that move closest to gangster rap are the ones that's becoming popular now. The ones that don't talk about nothing but some gangster shit. Emulating who? The music that's in the top of the charts now. I mean, that music, NWA, that, that video, that, that's, that, 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 um, that movie about the NWA, right? How everybody had to watch it. We got a whole generation that grew up with NWA and grew up with them that this is actually a commentary on their generation. And they loved this video. To me, it was some shallow shit. But I could understand why they loved it. I could really understand that. You know, because this is their generation. This is their, this is their, this is their, um, this is their soundtrack to them growing up. First time I wore some, you know, the first time I wore some uh, Adidas, man, and took the shoelaces out because I was down with, uh, what's the name, in my Long Island. But the fact that these niggas was little bourgeois Negroes out of Long they didn't come out the hood. None of them dudes came out the hood that was talking that shit. None of them. They was all little bourgeois, middle-class black kids from Long Island. You see what I'm saying? And, and the few ones that did come out the hood, like, like what's his name? Um, the, the kid out the Bronx. Um, okay. not, no, not him. He's, he's, he's like an exception to the rule. Because he, you know, he, he got a little politics. And he talks about chaos and he kind of convoluted himself. But, I mean, he's legit in terms, you know, he, he thought on a different level. Uh, what's the, um, the kid that got busted, that, that, that had to go into rehabilitation for drugs? He was in this movie with, with Jackie Chan, not Jackie Chan, in this karate movie. You know, what's this nigga's name? He's right out in my neighborhood, too. Used to be real, but he got a good style of rap, too. That hard street, that, you know, I'm gonna do my, what's that boy? DMX? DMX. Jonkers. Yeah. He's out in New York, he's legit. He was hardcore, too. You see? And, and, and so I'm saying, you had artists that were hardcore. But who emulated DMX? You can stop and think about it. <laughs> As opposed, as opposed to some of these other artists. You see what I'm saying? Now, DMX was straight hard. I like DMX. I like the sound. And he's, too, and he's funny. But he used to be straight hardcore, talking about shit straight up, you know? And, and there was another kid. Um, and, and, and those boys out of, um, out of Staten Island. wu tang I remember when I went out there and talked to them. In the, I didn't even know that was them. This is before they cut anything. I went out to the project. They invited me. Some kids invited me to the projects out there in Staten Island. Just being harassed by the police. This is when I got first got out of jail. And I went out with this with this kid named um, what was his name? His name was Ant Man or something. What's this little kid's name? Anyway, he took me out there. And I didn't know that this was these kids that would later become the Wu-Tang. They was hanging out in the project, smoking weed, sitting in the hallway. And I went in the hallway, because it was cold outside the day. They had, they had you know, heat was on in the hallway. So he used to hang out in the hallway of these projects, right? And he introduced me to these kids. And they started telling me about man. You know, we wish he had a Panther Party because this is what's happening to us here. You know, this is cop land, man. You know, all around here is cops. This is Staten Island, and this is how we, this is how we got to deal with. It. And it was later, was the that was some kids that became Wu Tang, you know, and so their experiences and the shit that what they were trying to make in terms of the music was trying to be real. I got that, you know, I got that. But at the same time, the way the industry twisted that shit and turned it against them. Turned it against us. And how all of them niggas that initially started out having some politics wind up having none. Look at your homeboy. Um, what's his name? Put out that cop killer shit. Um, Ice T. Ice T. 
that motherfucker. He put out the cop killer shit. The, the, the unions went after him. He pulled it off the, off the market. And he's been playing cops ever since. Every time you see that motherfucker on the roll on TV, he's a cop. Or he's some criminal that's snitching with the cops. You see? They just flipped him. You see? I mean, that, this shit is, um, I mean, this, this is why, I'm, this is why when, I, you know, when I talk to these brothers you know, um, and sisters that do this music and have this creative stuff, like they'll do a conference you know, on politics and hip hop, or, you know, and you know, they're older now. They're your age and they're much older, okay? So they got, a lot, they got some experiences, some understanding, and some, you know, some shit behind them now. So they're able to look and see some limitations that they maybe didn't see when they was growing up and this was their soundtrack. You see what I'm saying? So that's cool. But inevitably, inevitably, they think that that music actually empowers them. 